Let's Podcast alongside Lauren Brownlow, that Brownlow lady. I'm Joe Ovius inside Eford Studios. Thanks to Empire Properties and thanks to Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. Print assessment, document management, get yourself up with the cloud, get yourself really efficient, and more importantly, save money. You might be looking at how your first quarter went. You probably want to cut down on some cost. Copiers Plus can do that for you. So again, check them out. Copiers-plus.com. I feel like the Carolina Hurricanes probably want to cut down on their mistakes. Oh, yeah. Cut down on some whiffs and um, in, increase their productivity when it comes to power play opportunities. Uh, we did a uh, we did an after dark last night or an after dusk, if you will, since it was an sure. early four o'clock game. Uh, Mike Manis- definitely took longer than they usually do. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Maniscalco, Bally Sports, play by play, Luke DeCock, News and Observer, me and Gilio. Uh, that's on our YouTube channel. That's in the podcast feed. We went way more in depth uh, when it comes to the Carolina Hurricanes. One thing I did not get to last night was hearing from Rod Brindamore, and we can spend 35 minutes talking about what the Canes could do better, what the Rangers did or did not do, the ref, the refs, all that kind of stuff. As I jokingly said on Twitter last night, Lauren, uh, I feel like the casual hockey fans who check in with the Carolina Hurricanes once once we get to the playoffs. Hi, Ace, yes. <laughs> ACC officiating prepares you for Stanley Cup playoff officiating. Sure. A lot of like, whoa, 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 hey. So the Canes went to the box a few times. There's some confusion uh, as it relates to Tony D'Angelo. And Bernard Moore wasn't really interested in any of that stuff. He was just very much to the point, And he's right that the special teams, the power plays, had to be better when they had the opportunities. The Rangers took advantage of it. And they did not. Rod, obviously, um, special teams was was the difference tonight. Is that, were you happy beyond beyond what happened with that? Yeah, I thought we played a pretty good game. Um, you know, a couple, you know, kills we didn't quite execute right, and they they did. They did. You know, they went made their three quick passes and hit it, and we we were just a step off, and that's the difference. So tough because we played pretty hard, and I thought overall, as actually the game got on, we were we got a little better. That's the difference. Right. Did you, they just was in the box and then they would review it and then Tony goes in the box. Did you ever get an explanation on what happened there? No. Not, not one that made sense to me. But, um. And then discipline-wise, it seemed like whatever the effect that the opener and the building and all that stuff had, you guys were able to kind of dial it in the second two periods. And, and yeah, I thought, it, like I said, other than that, that really 20 seconds worth of specialty time where we just didn't execute and they did that uh, we had a pretty good game so there you go there's classic rod Brunner Moore, and he's not wrong i mean once things got out of that first period which was a complete disaster for the hurricanes yeah uh, they did settle in they played better they made it a one goal game uh, freddie anderson probably wants that fourth goal back as we discussed last night um, yeah and Tony D'Angelo uh, was made available and he had some follow-ups on that whole confusion as to his elbow going in the box. I mean, it makes sense that they put him in the box. He can't throw a high elbow like that. Uh, there's one of the things that I talked about with Tony D'Angelo since he's been put in this situation. Don't do anything silly. And there's just something about the Rangers. Yeah, that, for sure. And they, you know, there is obviously still that. Yeah. Attention. And Luke DeCock actually <laughs> asked him about that at the end of the sequence and he wasn't really in the mood for it. Yeah. I mean, I don't see it. Like I said, I'm not even going to get into it. It's tough. We had five PPs too, so they could go both ways. It's a tough job for them guys. And then, you know, they make a call. So it is what it is. Tony, is that part of the frustration? They only get two power plays. They score them both. You guys get your chances, especially the short one late. Um, I mean, it's kind of like 2022 all over again in that respect with their power play. Yeah. I mean, that's one game. They, they did a nice job. They executed two real nice plays. Uh, I thought we did a pretty good job on our power play. There was just, you know, it didn't go in tonight. So that's why you play seven games. And the, the reception, you were expecting that, I assume. I could give to, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He could give two whatevers about that. That's fine. That sure. is fine. That is fine. Let's take a break. Let's take a hockey break. Brought to you by Happy Big thanks to Happy and Hale for sponsoring our hockey coverage throughout the postseason. Uh, given my diet yesterday, uh, I'm going to need to go to Happy and Hale and have have a smoothie to, to detox a little bit. Yeah, like a Cinco de Mayo. I went a little hard in the paint at a friend's house last night when it comes to the food. I mean, you know, it's a holiday. What are you going to do? Although. Uh, much like we'll talk about this a little bit later because I have a hey Joe question for you. Uh oh. Because uh, this weekend is funny in in that people go overboard for two basically made up American holidays. 
Now you have the modern era of May the 4th. I don't want... Whatever. We're going to talk about this. I know. We're going to talk about this. That's great. And of course, you have Cinco de Mayo, yeah. which, I mean, I don't know about you, but I eat Mexican food all the time. I feel I feel for the Mexican restaurants in the area. I know. That get flooded with all this stuff. I remember in the pandemic when people got mad at like the wait times to order takeout. Right. For it's like, like I'm y'all, sorry. Y'all. There are only, I mean, there are a good amount of, of good Mexican places yes. around here. I'm not saying there aren't, but like there are but only anyway, so many of them still. So you, you, you need to chill out a little bit on That's that. Right. Okay. You got to chill out a you bit. You need to calm that. down. We've talked about Happy and Hale in the, in the concept of uh, the Bernsey Bowl, like good, clean, protein eating, right? Right. Sometimes you just need a salad. You know, and yeah, you wrong. have to you have to get your greens in. Got to get your greens. Listen, in. Get, get that roughage. I'm and, bad at that. I have to make a point of it. You hey, know? and maybe you don't want to take it in the form of that. You can actually have the green smoothie, which I'm a big fan of. And I'm going to that's be doing the that. easiest way for me to get it. Honestly, because that's, that's yeah. what I'm doing after the show today. That's when we smart. get done recording here, I'm going to hit the Happy Hill on North Hills, yeah. and I'm going to get myself that green smoothie. There you go. And I'll feel better about myself. <laughs> and when the Canes are back at PNC Arena on Thursday night, you can hit it, uh, Happy and Hail. At section 123, they got a cart there with the protein bowl. They got the Bernsey bowl as well. So we appreciate them sponsoring, being one of our corporate champions here on Ovia's and Gilio. Now, one thing that I did want to circle back into, and we'll we'll talk some more about the series tomorrow as we get ready for game two. But there's some residual from last week related to Rod Brindamore and his status as the head coach of the Carolina Hurricanes. I've made this joke plenty of times. I think it's still valid. I think it actually still resonates with what's going on. The Carolina Hurricanes, for the longest time, had been dealing with relocation rumors. Canadian media, just for whatever reason, still does not believe in hockey in the South. They just think that fans just don't care and they're going to move on. And the Hurricanes have been a point of obsession with a team moving to Canada. Right. right? And so, so oh, it came to the Quebec. They're going to relocate. Okay, whatever. And... Every and I think it finally got put to rest with the PNC Arena renovation plans and everything else. Tom Dundon recommitting all that stuff, so they have to move on to a new thing to kind of poke at the Carolina Hurricanes and just prove ah, what do they know? This is not a real hockey market, and that is Rod Brindamore and his coaching status. Just think about what Rod Brindamore could do in Toronto. Think about what Rod Brindamore could I mean, do anywhere else. You know? I don't know. Yeah, let's go anywhere else because we and, all know Toronto. Yeah, he's got his connection with Ron Francis up in Seattle, as if mm-hmm. you don't quite know the nuances. No, of that relationship. I was going to say, I was like, uh. and I think that's probably the thing that has bothered me the most over the last couple of weeks when it comes to the conversation about Rod Brindamore. We already deal with a local news source deficiency for sure. I mean, we see this all the time, you know, when we talk about ACC stuff or Carolina Panthers stuff, and it's no different when it comes to the Carolina Hurricanes. For whatever reason, people don't want to believe the people on the ground that cover the team. Right. So you have all these people telling you, including us, yeah, the contract situation's dumb. It tracks with Tom Dundon, the yes. owner of the Carolina Hurricanes, and yes. how he goes about just about every contract. At the very least, I can give him consistency. He treats these negotiations like he does with play-by-play people, like he does with people behind the scenes, he does with players, et cetera. Rod Brindamore is no different, despite the fact that he has helped usher in unprecedented success for this franchise. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he is probably getting paid below market value. But Rod understands that he doesn't want to go anywhere. So there's that weird dynamic of, this is my coaching job. I don't want to go anywhere. This might be his last coaching job. If he's done with the Carolina Hurricanes, let's say it happens three more years, he's not going to go just coach somewhere else. Right, like he has roots here. It's yeah. not, and I, I, that's one of the many things. I think people just look at coaching in a vacuum and just mm-hmm. say, well, they'll clearly just want like the best opportunity where they can make the most money or have the best chance at success or whatever you want to say, right? And it's like, it's not, regardless of the sport, it's never quite that simple. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times before you dive into the nuance, it's easy to like, coach search that way and be like, oh, so-and-so could go here. And it's like, yeah, but do they have any connections there? Where's their family? Like, how old are their kids? How long have they been in this place? Like, all of that stuff matters. And then that's not even to mention the Dundon stuff and the way he usually does things. Yeah. Is there going to be a resolution? Is Rod Brindamore going to have a new contract with the Carolina Hurricanes? Yes. Is is, Is there an unnecessary level of drama to this entire process that it goes all the way down to the last minute towards like when your contract literally ends? Yes. yes, that's it's also <laughs> dumb too, right? I get all that stuff. But in the end, Rod will still be the head coach. I was at Wake Competition Center over the weekend because Jacob's got a bunch of clinics. Um, and I saw Adam Gold. 
uh, because the Canes were practicing on Saturday before they took off for New York. So I caught up with Gold, and we were we Aww. were I know it was it was cute, and we were talking. We were just we were just shooting the shit, and we were talking about uh, the Brendan Moore stuff. And he, and he just motions to me. He goes, "You know, you know, Rod's next coaching step." And I was like, "What?" He goes. Out there with the kids, right? That's his next coaching Probably. stop. I, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's totally it. That's much more likely than after coaching here being like in Canada or whatever. So I think people who listen to the podcast, people who follow local media, they understand. Hey, man, yes, this makes sense. But then something funny happens, and the evolution of how the media cycle works rears its ugly head. And it's it's funny. My my brother is probably listening to this going, oh, he's going he's gonna to reference me again. And my brother has kind of turned into this weird, I'll admit, he's kind of turned into like the everyman avatar. You know, you know that old saying? No, no, seriously. You know that old saying okay. where you know it's a problem once so a, and so news, says, sto- like, or, once a news story yeah. hits the morning shows? Right. Like if it's on Good Morning America, you're like, ooh, okay. That so means- for you, it's like if your brother's texting you. That's, mm-hmm. that's your barometer of like, oh, okay. So if my brother, who's not in this market right. and is extremely online, he's on TikTok, he's on Reels all the time, he sends me something. I'm like, oh, we've hit that point, haven't we? That's kind of how I treat it with my brother. Yeah. Um, Because he's even when it comes to the Carolina Hurricanes, he's a total cash, total casual. Yeah. But that's fine. I, I need that in my life. See, I, I am too, basically, yeah. but I still knew all of those things about <laughs> like well, the coaching you're here and you, right. you hang out with us. So he sends me this TikTok from uh, this outlet called Bar Down. I know they've got a podcast. It's a hockey lifestyle, hockey-centric podcast. I've seen their stuff in my timeline before. I don't think much of it. But it touches on all the things that are bothering me about the current state of aggregation. Back in my day, Lauren, (laughs) back in your day, when we walked uphill in the snow both ways to go to our sure. favorite blogging To platform. go to our favorite Carolina Duke game that didn't happen. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> but back in the blogging days, right, Brownlow, right. you at least would link to the 100%. source of where it was coming from. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. So I get that 99% of people that were reading an aggregator blog were lazy and never clicked on said link. Right. But at least it was there. There was sourcing. It was like going to Wikipedia and you see the little one, the little two, the annotation. I'm like, oh, okay. You got this from somewhere. To be somewhat fair to those people, though, now what you do to get information is you do go do a Twitter search for something. You you can't because you... Sorry. I mean, we've been on the search engines we all use. They're bad on purpose now. So you can't rely on a search engine to find good local news. It'll probably send you to some sponsored right. website all, with like... It's all AI shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's all and AI. so like you can't find good results like searching and trying to find a link to use either. And the blogs all used to kind of link to each other like word of mouth. Oh, this guy wrote this thing and he sourced in with this. You know what I mean? Like, so that's how stuff you could know was credible, but now we don't even even have that chain of custody. So so David sends me, David sends me this, uh, this TikTok and and I open it up and right off the bat, it does the thing that confuses me. So all these TikToks and reels require weird synth wave creepy music in the background. What on oh. earth is going on with Rod Brendamore and the Carolina Hurricanes? This is getting weird. According to TSN's Darren Drager, Brendamore's future with the team is up in the air. An offer was close to being struck, but then it was pulled? I don't know. This all seems just a little fishy. Brendamore has been the model of consistency, leading the Hurricanes to three division titles and two conference finals so far during the playoffs. I mean, just look at this man. He's completely chiseled. According to Cap Friendly, out of coaches whose salaries we know, Mike Sullivan of the Pittsburgh Penguins is currently making the most money at $5.5 million per year. So, given Brenmore's recent success, he should probably command somewhat close to that. This is a very interesting situation, Monitor, because obviously, Brenmore was the captain of the Hurricanes when they won the Stanley Cup, but he was born in Ottawa, and who knows? Maybe he can make a return home. I could see it happening. Or maybe he'll go to your Winnipeg Jets. Then they're either someone they're either they're like huge horror movie fans, which respect, but that's not the place for your crossover. Or what because it was so, the music? I'm sorry, like I was so distracted by the music, I could barely until the end, I could barely pay attention, and it was too loud. So like, like last week, six seventy, the score up in Chicago, or two weeks ago, it was after the draft, and Julia had sent me this reel from the sports talk station up there, and they were talking. They're basically like using yeah. it as an excuse to clown the Panthers in the trade, and like you're telling me we got Caleb Williams and this and that off this trade. And there was playing strange, it was almost like Stranger Things synth wave underneath it. 
Oh, it's Should so we good. blame Jack Antonoff for this? Maybe that's the maybe that's the case. I don't know. <laughs> but, but his like, isn't like creepy. Ex- that's the thing. His is like upbeat and happy, and like that music is like someone's coming to kill you. No, it sounded to me like the synth equivalent of whales mating. That's what it sounded like. Well, it to reminded me. me of a little bit of the It Follows soundtrack, oh, okay, actually. Okay, but okay. It, but like I mean, I've I've seen horror movies with soundtracks but, like that. But 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 this is the equivalent of. Has Livy been rizzed up by Baby Gronk? Is Baby Gronk the new Riz King? Like that's what this stuff is, and it's aggregator stuff. I was talking to Adam. I can't really understand what you said. But I was I, well. That's that was a real thing last. I summer. know. I do remember. Once I put the words back together in my head, I had to. So last week I was uh, I was chatting with Adam Eshball from the Nine One Nine Advice podcast, and he was explaining to me how like he gets most of his news from TikTok now. And I was like, Are you sure that's where you really want to get your news from? And all it really is is aggregating stuff. Eshbaugh's from- an elite TikToker, by the way. No, I know he is. He's, Very good. He's off the charts. Very good funny. At, I laugh at, all at the, the time. TikTok. Shout I, out to Eshbaugh. I wish I could pay him to make TikToks for the show. So good. But but my I was kind of flabbergasted <laughs> by it because most of that stuff, again, is getting aggregated. Even right. this guy from Bar Down was like, Darren Dreger. I'm like, okay. And, but then you just go into wild speculation. Well, could he be your coach of the Winnipeg Jets? I'm like, what are we doing? And this then start, right. it's not all that different from- Well, that's from, in Canada, and he was born in Ottawa. This shit's not any different. <laughs> it's just the next evolution of the dude from West Virginia telling you, I'm hearing that the, right. you know West Virginia and NC State are going to be moving to the well, Big it's just, 12. It's like almost kind of like, it, to me, it almost feels like like the coaching level of like the trade machine too or something, yeah, right? So. Where it's like, oh, this coach could it doesn't have a contract re-signed. Like maybe they'll come- here just without any stripped of any context or any knowledge about like whether they would or wouldn't do that the temptation is to just try to do this stuff but i can't it's not in me i don't have that dog in me brownlow i mean if the dog means that you have to like play creepy music that sounds like you're gonna murder someone (laughs) underneath you that that like half the time drowns out what you're actually saying i mean that at all. <laughs> it was a little it was a little <laughs> upsetting. Uh big thanks to Inovana for sponsoring our housekeeping. If you have mess inside your mansion or cash in your cabana, get it clean, clean with Inovana. I guess I'm sitting here knocking the creepy synth wave meanwhile we've got happy little jingles about cleaning companies on there's the nothing podcast. wrong with being happy absolutely not you'll be happy <laughs> with a clean home so contact enovana e-n-o-v-a-n-a.com a little bit of housekeeping big thanks to everybody who showed up to the og birthday bash at shady's on friday night i did not know what to expect at first i was getting a little worried because i was starting to get texts from mutuals of ours brian low saying oh i really wanted to make it but something came up can't make. you know how it is for any party sure people say oh we're going then you know an hour before they're like oh something came up fine totally get it so i was, like, I was, I was worried there but great turnout thanks to everybody who showed up i think everybody ended up having a good time you looked like you were enjoying yourself brian low i had a good time yes I was tired the next day, but it was worth it. Yeah, I was a little <laughs> tired, on, on, but for different reasons. Uh, Josh from Whitaker and Hamer, uh, who owns Shady's and hosted us, he gave me a rumple mints shot. I have not had rumple mints since what high school. What is that? It's like another one of these gold schlager. It's like schnapps or something. Yeah, it's like, like a schnapp. Like it's like uh, what's the what's called the what's the bartender's mouthwash? Fernet, I think it's called. Oh boy! Not to be confused with Malort, which is disgusting, and I'm never going to have Malort again. Um, That's the thing. After, you you never want to have to puke after drinking something like that. No, you don't. It's a you nightmare. Don't. No. So I had a rumplement shot and I closed out the night with some some buffalo trace. But no, it was a good time. Thanks to everybody who showed up. Big thanks to Jason, aka OG Scoreboard, for doing the trivia. I'm dis- I'm disgusted in myself and how poorly I'm still I still mad about that. Disgusted I'm, with myself. I'm, I'm very like we were in the lead until well, I was I, I couldn't win, but I was helping out. Uh, <laughs> okay, I see. Friends I of see. the show, Jess and Alex. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, Laura and I were, but I was. We were. So, we were in the lead before the last question, and I'm still mad that we didn't. That neither of us could figure that one out. <sighs> yeah, yeah, but no. The uh, the Jason uh, does Sporkle trivia, so you can check him out. sporkle.com slash og triangle. Ooh, and, sweet. And uh, Sporkle. I love Sporkle. I was gonna say most people know Sporkle from the website, but Sporkle has expanded, and they do the trivia now. And you can put your knowledge to good use by playing Sporkle Events Trivia Nights at a variety of locations. We are at uh, Shady's 
uh, in Garner. I know that Shady's has a music quiz at Shady's in Garner on Thursday nights. Okay. I participated. You know me. I love a music quiz. I, I know. And I, I do, too. I was still I'm still embarrassed that I got one of uh, Shania's uh, albums wrong. Uh, like on yes. which album something I, that I, I was. I'm still mad at myself for that. I got that one right. I got the, I I'm get mad. that one right. So Thursday night's Shady's uh, at seven and eight o'clock. They've got the music quiz with Jason. And on Sundays, at Driftwood Cantina, he just does a classic pub quiz. Again, that's on Sundays, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock at Driftwood Cantina. Uh, but they've got quizzes just about every night of the week, whether it's in Durham, Bull City Cider Works on Monday. Uh, you can go to Buffalo Brothers uh, and Carry on Tuesday. Fortnite Brewing's got a spot on Wednesdays, House of Hops on Bell Street. they got Thursday House of Hops in Pittsburgh all over the place. That's at sporkle.com slash OG Triangle. So we appreciate them. And again, big thanks to the crew at Whitaker and Hamer and Shady's for helping us do the birthday bash. I think everybody had a good time. You can check them out at wh.lawyer. Again, that's wh.lawyer, attorneys and counselors at law. And then probably the, the biggest hero of the night was the Breeze Through Oak City Grill food truck because I ended up getting the barbecue loaded fries. Oh, nice. I needed that after all the high lives. I, I definitely <laughs> needed that after all the high lives. That came through. Check them out, breezethrough.com, Oak City food truck as well. Oak City Grill food truck too. Um, was getting the job done. And Adam over at Breeze Through and the crew came by and they handed us these sweaters that we're going to have to rock during the next OG After Dark. Okay. Those damn canes. Uh, it was good stuff. So big red sweater. I'm very excited about that. So big thanks to everybody who showed up. Great time. And we'll do it again next year. Bigger and better. That's not to say we're done with events because we got some more events Obviously coming not. up. Yes. We have on May 25th, we're going to have uh, tickets go on sale for the Sports Podcast Festival that'll be taking place in August at Rialto. We're going to have our friends Michael Felder and Hand in the Dirt come yes. through and the headliner shut down full cast. I know you're excited about this, Lauren. I'm very I'm very excited. You're you're big you're big into the full cast uh you know, cinematic universe. I'm personal and professional Fans of both podcasts, let's just say the people on both podcasts. So it's going to yes. be a lot of fun. So all that is coming up uh, May 25th when tickets go on sale. We'll have more information for you as the weeks come through. You know, it's what's today's date? May 6th. Oh, speaking of May the 4th, it's the 6th, which means it's time for the Revenge of the 6th. Come on, Lauren. That's pretty good. I know why you're doing that. I'm not taking your bait. I'm not going to let you bait me. I'm not going to let you do it. I love when the uh, Roadcaster soundboard comes through uh, with the sound effects. So it's May 6th. We're out of the draft. We can't really talk about what next year's draft is going to look like. So we still have to kind of go over some retread stuff. And this is where Superman comes to the rescue. Cam Newton and his podcast. So uh, there's, I, I'm curious your thoughts on this because I heard it a certain way. Others heard it a different way. Okay. And this was in relation to Bryce Young. Uh-oh. And just what kind of pressure Bryce Young is under this upcoming season with a new coaching staff, given the year that they had. I'm willing to give Bryce Young the benefit of the doubt because of just how poorly they whiffed on the coaching staff last year. Right. And how clearly how much it was evident that Frank Wright couldn't stand having him as his quarterback. And, yes. And what they put around him. Coached him like he was a, a hostage. So <laughs> with Dave Canales, yeah. I think everybody on the same page, yeah. trying to go out and get, you know, best wide receiver available at that time, trying to get the next yeah. running back, all that kind of stuff, well, you know, getting better. Around, we can debate the running back. Using some free agency fine. to get better on the line, all those types of Hopefully. things. Hopefully. Hopefully we shall see. So Cam on his podcast, fourth and one, um, had put this out. This is somebody that aggregated this guy, Ken. He's a Panthers fan. He said, drafted the wrong guy. Everyone want to talk about the situation, blah, 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 blah. Some things are black and white. So here's the clip from Cam Newton from his podcast, Fourth and One. I want to see if you heard the same thing I did. Okay. <laughs> Do you Bruh. think Carolina's sitting over there? Duh. Like, the fuck? It ain't, ain't even like, duh. Can't even get it out. And, bro, like, in the mid form of the season, when you start seeing the skill set come into play, yeah, I guarantee it. Knowing what we know now, I think a lot of people will take CJ Stroud number one over Bryce Young. So, what about uh, my man from the Colts, Ant Anthony Richardson, over Bryce? Yes. With what? What? 
what with what saying? we saw this year, hindsight's 2020. Yeah. You know, everybody can go back and say, like, bro, CJ Stroud is a star. So there you go. There's Cam Newton. And uh, I'm I'm glad he went hindsight's 2020 because he did give us the famous hindsight 50-50 at one point in time <laughs> when he was playing for the Carolina Panthers. Uh -oh. Shout out to Shannon Penn, who had the greatest Cam Newton oh clips of God, all time yes. all strung together back in the day. All I heard from Cam, this was interpreted as, oh, Cam has bailed on Bryce Young. It, Cam, Cam, Cam's, oh, you know, all of a sudden, like, no, I think he's just saying that had we known like, right. Given the given what we've seen, if you could go back and do it, would you still take Bryce Young? And I think, as he said, C.J. Stroud is a star based on what we saw his rookie season. But what I'd love to see Cam address, and I haven't listened to the full podcast, and I'll have time this week to check out if he if he followed up on this or his producer followed up on this. Do you think that C.J. Stroud would have had the same kind of season if, say, the Carolina Panthers had drafted him with that coaching staff? given the weapons yeah, around him versus what the Houston Texans had. I, was, I mean, no, I, okay. I can say that. No. Yeah. Like we saw, I mean, I don't even think Cam at his best would have had a very good year with the cast that was around last year. Personally. Probably I mean, not. I don't know. He had some pretty bad ones that he made look way better than they were <laughs> to be fair to Cam. That's, that's the beauty of Cam. But like, I, I, I no, especially if his coach coached offense, like he didn't like him. Or like he didn't trust him or whatever. You know, there were a lot of things that went into it, yeah, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> it's it's going to be looked at differently because he used to be the quarterback there and mm -hmm. it's going to look like he's throwing Bryce under the bus. Like, that's what it's always going to look like, no matter what. I don't think Cam cares. He's going to say what he thinks and that's whatever. That's mm -hmm. why he's got a podcast people are paying attention to. But um, one thing Cam will probably never say about what he actually thinks is how poorly this organization will treat its quarterbacks anyway. So if you care about CJ Stroud at all, if you wanted him to succeed, you probably didn't want him to be drafted Maybe. by the Carolina Panthers. Maybe. Like they probably did CJ a favor, I guess in, 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 in hindsight, I hate to say that, but like, look at the history of this organization and good quarterbacks of which there are a few. And the ones that they did have, they managed to ruin. I'd also push back on cam on this. Because uh, his producer asked him about Anthony Richardson. Yeah, with, that one I was. The, that one. That one got my. Face. Yeah, I was like, no. Nah. Yeah, you made a face on that. <laughs> I one. don't know about all that. And I think this is actually the most underappreciated aspect about Bryce Young. I said this when the season wrapped up. I think it's worth repeating if we're having this conversation about oh, C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson or the quarterbacks you have available now. Bryce Young's biggest knock was his size, and it will continue to be his size. You know, I, I sat here and I was complaining about news aggregation with the folks at Bar Down. I'd seen this put into my feed from a Panthers aggregator site called Cat Crave. And they got me on the headline. It's like, you know, this NFL writer, um, you know, put Cam, said this outlandish thing about Bryce Young. I was like, oh, okay, well, who was it? I mean, it wasn't anybody I had heard of before. It was some other website that said that Cam Bryce Young was one of the five quarterbacks going into the season that if they don't have a good year, they're going to replace them. I'm like, wow, okay, that's a, that's a pretty bold statement. I get it. It's May. You got to have that conversation. So the one knock on Bryce has always been about that size. But you know, one thing that Bryce Young did not happen, it did not happen to him this year, but it happened to Anthony Richardson. He had hurt. He never got hurt. That's right. And then even the game that we know what the truth was, there yes. was no high ankle sprain liars. No, he got benched. Thank you. All right. They got that, that when we get <laughs> that further, was a mental yeah. health benching. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me or get better at lying. One of the two. That was a, that was God. an effective benching under the guise of a yes. high ankle sprain. That's what that was. It was a reset for Bryce Young. Anthony Richardson, there yeah. were some questions about his durability last year, and the same thing could be said about C.J. Stroud. So we never really saw that out of Bryce Young. I don't expect to see that out of Bryce Young. Dude could take hits. Dude the, was ultimately the, durable. The real question will be, like, how durable is he mentally? Because a year like last year would break a lot of people. Well, I think Dave Canales, it's interesting you bring that up, because Canales, when he took the job, I think it was with um, Kristen Balboni, you know, the in-house interview that yeah. Canales had done. I don't have the clip. I deleted the clip ages ago, but I remember it because I thought he really made a good point. And, and I know Gilio's made this point too. Last year, if spun correctly, can be a benefit. Yeah, and, and Canales just looked at, I kind of effectively looked at last year as a year zero. You survived last year. As a rookie, you survived Lord. in the worst possible situation imaginable. So now you know, basically what Canales was saying is, I know what doesn't work. So let's go in 
and do the things that I know will work. Let's run my system. That's where you're, that's where you're optimistic about what Canals is trying to do. Well, and like, it's almost like getting a great therapist because you've got a guy in there that's got belief in you, at least in public, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully in private as well. Yeah, let's hope so. uh, but, you know, you've got a guy that's going to be gassing you up and, and trying to get you back to a place where you're feeling good about yourself. So, it, you know, if anybody can get him through that, it's probably a guy like Canales. But you do wonder, like, are you going to see ghosts? Is the left tackle situation OK? I, they seem to think it's fine, which concerns me probably the most of any Panthers offseason thing is that no one is like they need a left tackle. I'm like, do they not? <laughs> uh, do we? I'm sorry. Are we are we declaring that fixed? It's not fixed. to I, me. Yeah, I don't I don't view it as fixed. I don't view it as fixed. You you brought up Cam's views on the Panthers organization, how they treat quarterbacks. He's never going to say anything in public about it. I, I, I wanted him to ever He's since he to. ever since he retired or like left the team. I thought maybe once he got away, he would speak to it. And I, I give Cam and it's fine. We we can know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. We he doesn't have to say it if he don't want to say it. But. And I give I give Cam Newton a lot of credit too because uh, as much as he he is a Panther, and in this clip that I'll play from the most recent one of Cam Newton's podcast, he's a Panther. He's always going to be a Panther. It is what it is. Mm. Um. So he's unafraid to speak out on ownership. He's unafraid to speak out on Bryce Young and those types of things. He's not here trying to gas up the Carolina Panthers. So I appreciate sure. that. I appreciate that out of Cam Newton because now, a lot if of Jerry were still the owner. Would that be the case? I don't know, I but don't know. it doesn't matter because he's not. So. I, I, I really don't know. But my point here with Cam Newton is there's a lot of former players that will go out of their way to try to gas up their team, mm -hmm. their old team, because, it, you know, they still have relationships back in the building, and everything else. Cam's his own dude. Rodney he's Harrison. Gonna, <laughs> Cam's his own dude. And he's going to stay that way. And I thought this was interesting from the fourth and one show as it relates to David Tepper. Keep me out of it because I'm still a Panther to the day I die. I don't give a damn if it's a Carolina Panther or a Black Panther. I'm a Panther, all right? <laughs> David Tepper, my man, you can't do that. But what I will tell you this. What you gonna tell me, boy? Y'all think this dude crazy. <laughs> Tepper, he ain't crazy. Mm -hmm. Why he ain't crazy? He know who to try. <laughs> he know who had to take off of, and he know who drink to throw on. Cause let me tell you something. What's out? If we wanna play, Truth or dare, or let's just cut straight to the tape. Play yeah. Dare. I can bring you to some places. Hell, even in the Queen City. <laughs> and heaven forbid Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I say, you feeling froggy? Come on. With me. <laughs> he was in deal work. Come yeah, on. Okay. You want to take somebody's hat off? Yeah. <laughs> take that hat off. Over there. Yeah. You want to throw some drinks? Come here. Come on, uh -uh. Tell I'm gonna do like my mama used to do me. Oh, you want to show out in class? Oh, uh, right. come on, you come show on, <laughs> come show out. Go show this. You want to throw some drinks? Come on, yeah. I'll throw a drink at that motherfucker right there. See how far you get. So he ain't crazy now. Yeah, yeah he did that in Dilworth, not on Baylor's Ford, but yeah. not the Ford. No, uh -huh. okay. They say you from uh, Charlotte, Pan. I know. What he? What could he have not got away with that? Well, on Baylor's Ford, the yeah. West Side. Mm -mm. Boy, you wouldn't even walk in there talking about the sign. <laughs> Shit, you would have drove past it and glad they put a sign up and come to your front door. Say, That's what you would have been doing. They banging like that. Uh, whoa, whoa. but <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love this version uh, of Cam Newton. I yes. absolutely love this version of Cam. Keeping Newton. it real with Cam. But here's the thing: Cam hit on in a very Cam way. What I was saying last week yeah. when we came back from the draft on Monday and everything else, this is how David Tepper views a particular type of fan. As I said back then, he can walk in there and be like, I can literally buy this place right now because I'm that rich. I paid cash for this team. I can raise this place if I want to. But to Cam's point, he knows he can in those situations. Because that guy who took the hat off. Because he knows off, they're not going to like gonna try shit. him. They're not going to do gonna anything do physical. But there are places where they're not going to give a damn. And what's funny he's is. David Tepper. And in fact, that might actually make things worse for him could in be. that moment. I ended up getting. There was a comment on YouTube. There's a, Actually, I've seen a couple of comments. Not just one comment. But there's been a couple of comments from folks who are of the opinion that we were making too big of a deal of I, I, Tepper's antics last week. I think you mostly just think it's funny, right? That's what I think. I think it's, I, I think it's ultimately funny but also sad at the same time 
And well, that's what makes it funny. To Cam me. Cam went on to say in that clip <laughs> that you keep doing stuff like that, you're going to lose the fan base, which was ultimately my point last week. I mean, to was be fair, being, it's what, lost. It's yeah, but like, like it's the, it's too late for that. The one comment was he's clearly being playful. Was he though? I mean, his I will say this: his vibe in the video was more playful than I thought it would be when I when I heard about the incident. Like, but the fact he even got out of the car to quote unquote right. be playful is the problem. It, right. It just shows keep driving. Just because, be unbothered. Because why are you so bothered? Exactly. What, now that we why know are that all you're these bothered, billionaires so bothered. Very emotional, Lauren. I just. Oh my god. You Very think? Emotional. I guess money really doesn't buy you happiness. No, 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 no. <laughs> if if there's anything that I've uh, kind of come away with the Drake Kendrick disc fest from the weekend, uh, Drake might have all the hits and all the money, but he's clearly not a happy guy. But that's another well, conversation yeah. for another day. Big thanks to State Farm, Matt Davis, insuregarner.com, the OG insurance.com, or call Matt directly, 919 779 8277. Caught up with Matt at the OG birthday bash on Friday night. Good to catch up with him. And um, he was just kind of uh, amused by uh, how listeners will connect dots and six degrees of separation and everything else. We love to see that kind of stuff. And as I've been pointing out, I've, I've explained this on social media, I've explained on the podcast. If you want to support us and want to keep the podcast going, well, support our corporate champions like Matt Davis, insure, insuregarner.com, the OG insurance.com, or call directly at 919 779 8277. Big thanks to Roback. Check them out online, roback.com, R H O back.com. Use that promo code OG20. I use the promo code OG20 to buy some shorts. I'm actually rocking some skies out, thighs out today on the, uh, on the shorts. And uh, the everyday shorts from Roback are incredibly comfortable. Nice elastic waistband, uh, but a, a material and a look that you can pretty much wear in just about every situation, whether you're just being lazy and you're rolling up to the podcast studio to do a podcast, uh, or you want to dress it up with a polo like you can do at Roback. They dropped some Cinco de Mayo polos yesterday, including a um, ranch water print. Oh, I'm like, that's right up your alley. That's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> so check them out. Roback.com. Use that promo code OG20. Big thanks to Hometown Realty. Check them out online. My t- myhtr.com. Again, that's myhtr.com. Buy, sell with confidence. That's key right now. This market's pretty wild. Uh, the last thing you want to do is go in, fall in love with the house, and then suddenly things just, you're, you're caught off guard by something. Not with the experts that back you up with confidence at Hometown Realty. So again, check them out online, myhtr.com. Again, that's myhtr.com. Could you play the five at UNC, Brownlo? No, you're too small. You're too small. Uh, You're more of a one. I couldn't even. I couldn't play the five in in men's or women's <laughs> basketball. Like I'm a foot so, shorter than yeah. So there's 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 a silly way to talk about the transfer portal, and then there's a serious way to talk about the transfer portal. Like last week, I get a I get a, a push alert from ESPN updating me on Joe Lenardi's bracketology. Now that the portal has closed, with a shocking revelation of who the new overall number one is. I know. I know. It was incredibly upsetting. Yeah. I, was. I, I'm, I mean, I saw him do a bracketology after the tournament. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, does someone need to like justify his salary? Some, like, what are we doing hey, here? Hey, it is what it is. He's, but, he should be like a teacher. Give him some time off. But Please. there are there are some serious portal discussions and it's come home to roost for North Carolina. Right off the bat, we already knew it was going to be difficult to replace Armando Baycott. For sure. Armando Baker has been playing there for 20 years. It's incredibly difficult to replace his production, number one. Number two, his experience. All right? Yeah, Yeah, definitely. I mean, the guy is a Carolina guy through and through. That's tough to replace, especially in this era where you're bringing in pieces from other places. Now, it's worked out in some instances for North Carolina. Uh, We saw that last year with Harrison Ingram. We saw it two years ago with Brady uh, Brady Manick. We didn't necessarily see that uh, in between. 
Uh, we saw with Cormac Ryan this past year, too. He mm -hmm. came on strong at the end. Now, we know R.J. Davis is coming back, and I feel like one through three, Carolina's pretty much set. You got R.J. Davis. And that's that's a bit of, that's the thing, though, because that I've seen, like, all the hand wringing, and it's like, yeah, but the other things were a bit of a coup. So it's like... R.J. Davis back, Elliot Cadeau with another year of development, Seth Tremble, Tremble to add for... Like, come, it decides to come back after going in the portal. For some like, depth, that which was, obviously helps. That's a big deal. You are also getting some talented freshmen in Ian Jackson and Drake Powell, yes. uh, which is what Carolina fans obviously care about. You did add a piece in Kate Tyson. Totally get that. But mm -hmm. they have swung. This is Carolina's in a weird situation, very similar to how Duke was last year, where yeah. they swung and missed on some big men, and it came home to roost for them throughout, throughout the season. I mean, they still got to the Elite Eight and lost to the hottest of hot NC State squads, if you're Duke. So don't misunderstand. I mean, but there's levels to this, obviously. Duke's right. got their standard. Just like Carolina wants to be in a perpetual state of championship chasing. Or, more yeah, importantly, and I think get Carolina, guys to come to them. Carolina's backcourt certainly already better than Duke's was going into this year. So yes. I wouldn't, you know. But yes, yes I would I would say that that is definitely a concern. But I do like, I mean, I like Jalen Washington. Mm -hmm. I, I think he did some nice things. I think he's got a lot of potential. He's very athletic, for sure. He needs to add some bulk. Yes, probably there's going to gonna have to be a lot of development for him because it, yeah. it's pretty clear that Carolina was targeting somebody to either compliment him and they could just do a five by committee to replace Armando Bacon. Do they just go full small ball next year? And just, well, given, you know, given how they swung and missed on some of these transfer targets, that might actually be the case because the latest news and what's got Carolina fans understand, yeah. understandably like what the hell's going on. Uh, Clifford Amari uh, goes from Rutgers to Alabama. A couple things about this. In terms of production, I, it's not like I watched a shit ton of Rutgers basketball this past year. Who really did? But, you know, you go to Ken Palm, see what he spit out, things like that. Yeah. This was a valuable piece for what they're trying to do at Alabama. Mm -hmm. Nate Oates needs somebody who could be like a legitimate rim protector. I think he averaged nearly three blocks a game. That, that's a thing that they need. Uh, Carolina needs consistent rebounding. Again, that's that production that you're going to miss. And you want at least a little bit of a scoring threat. And you don't have to score like 20 a game or no, anything, but you no. want somebody that can at least like score on their sure. own. In the and, post. That's, <laughs> and that's where I think Jonas Adu had come into play from Tennessee, yeah. but he was a target that ended up going to Arkansas because, you know, John Calipari's got all the money in the world now these days. Aaron Bradshaw was another target. <laughs> not that, like he didn't before. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> good, but now he's got, he's got, what, what, what was the money? What was the company that as now he's company. actually oh, going he's got in chicken money. Now he's actually going in the transfer portal. Yeah, because he's got chicken money now. How about sure. that? Uh, so these are the guys that they've gone out uh, for, and they've they just haven't pulled it in. That's not to say they can't try to find another piece, but clearly Carolina has to go back to the drawing board on this one. Um, and I think there was a quote that I saw from on three in relation to uh, Cliff Amari going to Alabama. And he said something to the effect of, I, I wanted to go to a place that could help me get to the NBA. Okay. That's a touchy spot for Carolina fans. It's a touchy spot for Duke fans too. It's a touchy spot for, for Kentucky fans. The shifting of what you prioritize over time goes with who you get, who you don't get, and what your success level is, right? Yeah. If you were to talk to it's, a it's Duke a cycle. fan today, yeah. if you were to go, go look at the NBA playoffs, yeah, you'll see Duke guys all over it. You don't really see Carolina guys. The last Carolina yeah, guy, Kobe. Kobe White's like the only real Carolina guy that has like marketable, actual, tangible success that we've seen in the NBA in a really long time. Now, Carolina fans would tell you, yeah, cool. We might not be putting guys out in the NBA, but look what we've done in college. Which is true. You know, true enough. I mean, talk to a Duke person about that. Talk to Kentucky fans. Kentucky's the best example. I mean, you know, they're putting, they were putting guys, that was never an issue for them, putting no. guys into the NBA. That was never an issue for Cal. No. That, and yet he still got fired. So, I he, mean. He effectively, yeah, he he left, based, but he effectively got well, fired. Well, whatever. Yeah. Pushed, what's the Sendek? They were done they with used? him. They pushed out. Yes. John Calipari. Yes. They chased, they, they, they ran they, out the the <laughs> the ever popular Herb Sendek. Yes. For Sydney, for Sydney Lowe. But anyway. <laughs> No, look, they were, that was, those were two parties that were clearly done with each other. Kentucky fans were done with Calipari. No, I know. But they at the same time, like, his lack of evolution. NBA success alone can't save you is sort of the point. And if, if you're a fan on some level, of course, you're proud of the other, but you want, ideally, you want both. Yes. You know, that's in an yeah. ideal world, you want both. This is, um, this is where we are with NIL being the great equalizer. Yeah. Money being the great equalizer. I don't think it has anything to do with whether or not Carolina wants to play the NIL game. I really don't. No. I really don't. I really do think it has to do with the amount of money that's flowing through the SEC right now. 
thanks to television. Thanks, thanks to their TV deals. And that's only going to get worse, by the way. So buckle up. That's why you can. That's why Nate Oates can stay at Alabama and build, right? That's why Arkansas can pay whatever it is they're going to pay to John Calipari and be good with it. So I do think that you know, as much as we obsess over football and how football is driving the bus when it comes to this stuff, there is a trickle effect, a trickle down economics, if you will, that gets down to basketball. And there's just a lot of damn money flowing through the SEC, period. Yeah. And that affects quality of coaching staff that you can get. And I do think it affects what kind of NIL yeah. budget you put together as well. 100%. Like, I still remember, uh, I think it was R.L. Bynum was tweeting about this, the fact that Alabama had, like, coaches that they could afford to have all these extra coaches, including oh, yeah. some that, like, knew Carolina's plays and were, like, sitting across from the team calling them out. <laughs> But then the seating arrangement made it so the next game they they weren't within earshot of the coaches, so they couldn't do that. But I'm sitting there like, you know, that's what that money's going to yep. is is guys like that that you can do things like that and have the resources to just almost have them exclusive. You know what I mean? Like yeah. study tape, whatever. Yeah. Break break it break it down. Figure out who's running what and whatever. So I mean, it's only going to get worse. The disparities will get worse. Mm -hmm. So get used to it. I mean, I hate to be like a defeatist about it if you're in another conference, but like that's life now. Sorry. It, 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 that is that is life. If Jillia were here today, and I'm sure if he's listening to the podcast, he's probably screaming at the at the at the podcast player, whether he's on his AirPods or running through his car, about this is what life is like now for Carolina and Duke on a variety of levels. Until they until and unless they get out of here. I mean, I hate to say that, but like no, that, that's the situation that they're in. If they can get into one of those bigger leagues, they won't be in that situation. Let me ask you this. If Roy Williams was still the head coach of Carolina, would this be an issue? If Mike Krzyzewski was still the head coach at Duke, would why wouldn't this? it be an issue? I see. I, th I don't think it has anything to do with the, with mm -mm. the coaches. No. I, think it, I think it has everything to do with the fact that if money he, is the great equalizer yeah. in, this, in these situations. Absolutely. So, and and you have you're gonna have the want to factor of this because I think there's a little bit of hurt be, feelings. You still have to be run well, yeah. like see Texas A and M football, right? Yeah. You still have to be run effectively. It's not just throwing money at it, it's gonna fix it. And that's not to say that Carolina and Duke aren't being run effectively. I think they exactly. are. Exactly. I, I think I think both coaching staffs. But understand like, if what you want to have your pick, yes. of everybody, then that's where it's gonna start getting a lot more complicated because mm -hmm. of the money. Like yep. you said, for sure. But it is interesting to see the shift in how we used to obsess over, you know, the recruiting cycle and a guy deciding to go to one particular school. The transfer has added another layer to this. And I also think we, much like we did not know how a recruit was going to translate once they got to a college campus. I still think we don't know how a transfer is going to, oh, right. tr how they're going to transition to where they go in their new spot. Right. Yeah. Some players you go, okay, yeah, that's a really good pickup. Other players, you're surprised at the level of production they or end somebody up themselves seems in. like a great fit and they don't and they don't. Yeah. Pete I, Nance. Pete, just, Pete Nance is the prime uh, example of that with Carolina. I thought he would be I mean, I didn't think he'd be like amazing, but he I thought it would hurt. go better than it did. But yeah. you know. So these are all things that happened over the weekend in relation to Carolina. They missed out on um on a on a big man target. And again, I I'm sitting here telling you about transfers and stuff like that, and I keep reminding myself, oh, the portal's closed. I guess, I guess we're done when it comes to uh, the the roster transition. Uh, no, no. no we're, That's why I was like so surprised. Still that, yeah, we're still yeah. finding out about these types of things. It's, yeah. it's insane that we still don't know what the roster is going to look like, and we might not know for the next couple and of we'll weeks. And we'll get a whole new round of bracketology afterwards. Can't wait, bro. Though. Cannot wait. Very excited about that. <laughs> Big thanks to the Butcher's Market. Check them out, thebutchersmarket.com. Let's say you're headed to tailgate on Thursday or Saturday. We're going to have all, hopefully the weather's going to be great on Saturday for uh, for the Canes game four. You want to tailgate? Head on over to Butcher's Market. I went to the Butcher's Market this past weekend to get some meals for the week. I went for the prepared meals. I got that manicotti. I got the chicken meatballs that I'm going to make meatball subs with. And then I got a chicken marsala. Very excited about oh. that. Very excited about the chicken marsala. So head on over to thebutchersmarkets.com to find out more. And if you're over in the Lake Boone spot, go over to Two Roosters. Check them out online, tworoosters.com. You can find out their rotating flavors at their variety of locations. Speaking of the Canes, you can get the Stormy Tracks while you're hanging out at PNC Arena. Um, and if Jillio were here, he'd tell you all about that coffee bourbon. So check them out, tworoosters.com. Again, that's tworoosters.com. <laughs> Lauren, are you ready for the lightning round? Are you familiar with the lightning round? Uh, I'm not sure. Refresh my memory. You don't listen to the podcast. I appreciate that. 
We go through a variety of little topics. Okay. And I use the voice changer to announce lightning round. Oh, okay. Got it. Roast of Tom Brady took place last night. Oh, yeah. It was on Netflix. Yeah. Netflix was all in on some live stuff. I tried to watch the Cat Williams live special. And it wasn't very good. And I was too busy doing something else last night. So I did not watch the Tom Brady thing. I figured it was one of those things that the best material would end up showing up on my timeline. I initially aggregated. had that thought too, but I was like, you know what? Let me just turn it on. And I see Randy Moss and I'm like, okay, I'm okay. in now. Okay. I'm in. And then I just couldn't turn it off because it kept like ratcheting up now, almost. Was there anything as good as this morning's tweet from Eli Manning <laughs> who said, I thought about attending the roast of Tom Brady last night, but I did not want to roast him for a third time. That's uh, Well, there are a lot of Eli Manning jokes. Yeah. And I bet. And, I bet. And it was good. It was. It so was, was this you know, set up like those old Comedy Central roasts? Because I saw Jeffrey yes. Ross was there and 100%. Ross kind of stepped into Nikki it. Nikki Glaser as well. She was, okay. she was in a lot of those roasts, I think. And, um, you know, it was... It, you you definitely got that vibe for sure. Early on, I remember seeing tweets about like Brady looking uncomfortable, and I saw the clip about him like correcting Jeff Ross for making uh, the one Bob Kraft joke because I saw no more Bob Kraft jokes. I watched two hours, the last like two hours of it, yeah. zero Bob Kraft jokes about that, and that was in spite of a lot of joking about dicks, like just a lot of dick talk, a lot of penis talk, a lot of a lot of like <laughs> gay jokes. It was. I oh, was like, great. especially from the football players themselves, not like, I mean, it's, whatever. It, it's locker room it, talk. I guess. I mean, come on. I but, mean, but as Kevin Hart pointed out, I guess he said, called it like white boy locker room talk. Yeah. Because he's like, you don't joke with <laughs> with like black people that way, with black men that way. That's what he was saying anyway. He's like, yeah. he's like, that's that's jokes y'all made among yourselves. Like Julian Edelman, <sighs> like uh, Gronkowski, Gronkowski, man. Some, I think it was Mark Ennis. He tweeted something like Gronkowski seemed like he was doing the the TikTok thing where you get where like the kids let the 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 parents let the kids have like swearing time in the oh, bathroom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they just like say <laughs> it was almost a little it bit was, like that at first. It was almost uncomfortable, but he he found his he found it by the end. Like, fifth fifth grade, Saint Joan of Arc in Boca. We finally had to go through our sex ed talk. Mm -hmm. And the first, you know, they separate the boys and the girls. Because, you know, I guess we're, we're not. They did? Oh, yeah. They separated us. They didn't even say in my Catholic school. They didn't separate us. Oh, they separated us to talk about specific boy things. But in order to kind of like reset the room, the person who was in charge of the sex ed talk uh, said, all right, get it out of your system. So it was no, like, so like I, again, think a bunch of fifth grade guys mm -mm. just like, wait, you're telling me I can I can say this word in class? And get the laughs out now. That's, that's what exactly he, what just, it was. Just get, but that's the not going to work because then that just gets you laughing already. Right, right. It's it, not. It, it didn't work. It, it got to the point where the person that was running it said, "Okay, that's enough." I just, <laughs> I just remember literally hiding when they were like calling to read on people to read stuff out loud. Yeah, I'm like, you know, yeah, I can see that. You're just like hiding your face, like, nope, please don't I call on that. me. No. So that's so basically what you're telling me this. This reminds. It sounds like fifth grade <laughs> Saint of Arc. We're all just like, we can say. We can say dick. All right. Right. We're say it. Cool. And then when we just, all right, that sounds very yeah. Gronk level. It was very, and honestly, like if I had Mr. imagined Fiesta. the way Gronk's roast would go in my mind, yeah. it would have been almost exactly what I saw. All right. All right. Uh, including sp getting, here's uh, spiking a shot glass at the end. Here's the reason why I had no interest <laughs> in watching the roast of Tom Brady and why I really don't okay. have any interest in watching anything related to Tom Brady. I don't think he's interesting. I don't think he's an interesting person. Well, there were jokes made like that too. Okay. I mean, at least people Ron see Burgundy it. had some good jokes about Wait, why was Ron Burgundy? Why was I don't Will Ferrell know there as Ron by Burgundy? the way. He was there as Ron Burgundy. He was okay. clearly very like attracted to Tom in his act, oh, but he I'm didn't sure. like him as a quarterback. Like he called him like a dink and dunker and boring oh, and wow. snoozer and like okay. Yeah, it's just so, I mean, yeah, there were jokes like that so made. So Tom's supposed to go to the booth, right? And he's got this deal with Fox and all this seems like a really like they're trying really hard to prove to you. No, no, no. Tom's got a personality. I don't he, see it. I don't either, at least not in situations that okay. aren't at least somewhat man, manufactured. It's all right, that's the thing. Um, it all comes off as inauthentic. And that's I'm like I'm here to tell you that's okay. He was, if he doesn't have it listen, in him, he doesn't. I Peyton will say Manning this. is a charismatic Peyton guy. Was great. Eli Manning, charismatic guy. Tom, I just don't see him having it. I will say this. I was very surprised 
at how good he was at the end. Okay. Like, I know he pro I'm sure he probably didn't write a lot of that. Yeah, well. But. I mean, you know, you knew one guy wasn't writing his jokes that you enjoyed, so. I mean, yeah. it was, it was very funny. I enjoyed, like, he was funny. And I was like, wow, you know what? Because I don't like Tom Brady. I've never liked Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. I actively despise Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. However, I mean, it's not because he, like I can still admit that he's good at stuff and he's he was good. He was good at this. I still don't necessarily think he has a personality yeah. at the same time. Like I was impressed with his delivery. Like it, it was it was good. It was way better than I thought it would be when he came on at the end because he, he he had to follow a lot of people that did a great job and really crushed it. All right. All right. The, the, the Bob Kraft part of it is interesting that. Because that was a clip that I saw this morning. That See, he went up to Jeffrey Ross be like, don't say that shit. Again. I didn't want to watch the roast because I assumed, why would Tom Brady do this mm -hmm. just to get... Because he can be... We've known him to be thin-skinned about some things. Yeah. Right? I mean, people were calling him racist, all kinds of stuff last night. And he just... <sighs> you know, he took it for the most part in stride. There were some Giselle moments. There was at least one Bridget Moynihan moment oh, that you boy. could see him kind of making a face. Yeah. Uh, but at the well, same time... It's a roast. That's what you expect. Right. The only thing that he took umbrage to openly was the Bob Kraft huh. thing. And the thing is, in spite of all of the dick stuff. Yeah. And all the this guy did this to this guy, gave this guy <laughs> a hand job, whatever. <laughs> at no point was that joked about again for the final two hours. So well, you got to think like Bob Kraft was like, nah, we're pulling those off the teleprompter. Maybe, maybe it's because <laughs> when uh, Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick did a shot together, thanks to Kevin Hart's prodding. That uh, he said a black man did this. He yeah, did yeah, he did say that. I saw that clip. That was very funny. And uh, Robert Kraft went on as Bill was kind of like reluctantly going up there to take the shot with uh, Bob Kraft. Oh, oh, Kraft his was smile about, was my favorite. It was yeah, like, uh huh. I don't want to be here. And I guess Kraft, Belichick like, these, crushed it. By the are, way, these are like my two greatest achievements. You know, it's and of course if I'm part of Bob Kraft's family, I'm going. So these two guys are your guys? Are you? oh, okay. Listen, the way Tom Brady rides for Bob Kraft is... Uh, that's probably why he did that. They must have pictures or something of Maybe. each other. There must be something going on there. Belichick crushed it, though. I love... I I have come to really love him. Okay. And I did not like him before. Gotcha, gotcha. Thunder. What's he talking about thunder? Yeah, you know, because thunder always comes after lightning. Lightning round item number two. The NBA playoffs. Has yeah. sucked me in. I'm getting there because I finally, for the first time, understand why people have been talking up Anthony Edwards as much as they've been talking him up. He's just a really fun player to watch. He has become the star of this NBA playoffs, which is important for the NBA on a variety yes, of levels. Definitely on a variety of levels. Uh, the NBA on a television business perspective looks like they're going to be fine with their next tv deal because you have interested companies that need inventory they need the programming you have espn disney getting together with fox and warner brothers with this sports streaming package they need the nba to be a part of that nbc although is that pregame show ever going to be the same if no, it's not no well that's because if, if it stays with warner then yeah Chuck stays with that's the, what you have NBA to hope crew. for, I think. But yeah. if it goes to NBC, well, then we don't know what it's going to look like. But NBC is very serious about the NBA. Yeah. So clearly, you have two things that are going on with the NBA. You you understand the, the way the market works. There's still value in live sports, value in star. I mean, look, the Kentucky Derby did monster numbers. Was, monster, monster. Lightning round item number three, technically, because we're talking about the Kentucky Derby as well. The Kentucky Derby did really well in the ratings, but that's another conversation, it's, so we'll table that. So, my point is... Sorry, that just sounded insane, but it, go on. Well, I mean, that's the... That's the beauty of the lightning round. <laughs> the point is that you see what out-of-home viewing is doing to ratings. Yeah. Look at the Kentucky Derby, right? I was actually texting with Chip Patterson about this. He was like, yeah, man, at-home viewing really matters because where I was, every television got turned over to the Kentucky Derby. It certainly oh, helped. It's sure. a much more accurate representation of Is that why it was watching. so much later this year? I, I didn't like so. that. I think so, yeah. Now, the NBA hasn't seen the true benefits of at-home viewing, but it's still a valuable property. And But what they need, ultimately, is people to draw eyeballs. Yeah. And that's what Anthony Edwards is. Because at some point, people are going to have to move on from Kevin Durant. People are going to have to move on from Steph Curry. They're going to have to move on from LeBron James. LeBron clearly is setting things up for his final run, which gets us to lightning round item number four. They did the thing that happens with 
LeBron James where they got rid of the coach in Darvin Ham. And now the thing that happens with LeBron James, every coach gets fired other than Eric Spolstra. Like he's the only dude to ever survive this because the team is going to do whatever they can to make sure that LeBron, LeBron James is, is happy. happy. Yes. But I was going to tell you, I was like, let's, let's put him more of an active role in that. I'm here to tell you right <laughs> now. I'm here to tell you right now. LeBron James is not coming back to the Lakers. You don't think so? No. At, what all the things that are going on, LeBron's been very, very wishy-washy about it. He's going to see the landscape, and I think so he's why they seeing, fire him. I think he's seeing the West, all right? <laughs> yeah. And he's going to go back to the East somewhere. Now, where in the East? I don't know. Is it like a Philadelphia situation? I don't know. I don't know. That Does I he go back that. to Cleveland? I don't know. But I don't see him in the West next year. New York? The funny thing is, Knicks actually would make sense. It would make sense. But we shall see. We shall see. And finally, in the lightning round... I've lost track of lightning round items. So we'll just say this is lightning round item number six. <laughs> F1 was in Miami this past weekend. Yeah. And I was doing my usual reading of stuff and I saw Defector and the headline on Defector was uh, F1 Miami crushed me with the weight of wealth. You know, F F1 is a completely okay. different beast than NASCAR. In terms oh, yeah. of like the, the crowd and everything else. My dad, and it got me thinking, because my brother and I were texting about my dad wanted to go to another F1 race. And apparently my dad's kicking around the idea of going out to Barcelona for an F1 race. Woo! Spain, etc. Yeah, that was my reaction too. I was like, too. must be nice. That was my Dang. reaction too. Was whew, Because I did not know how expensive it was yeah. to go to F1. We're sitting here debating Kane's playoff tickets, right? Right. And I was talking to some of the other hockey parents yesterday and, and, and talking about hockey tickets and, and stuff like that. And there's the tire debate about geofencing that's taking place. Um, I don't know why this, every time it comes up, people act like it, a team is the first to do it. I know. And I'm like, know, no, no, this is, besides, how does that shut out fans of a New York team around here? Sorry, lots right. of those people are now local. Okay. Ex exactly. So cry less, please. So, so like, oh, you're geofencing Rangers fans. They all live they here. They live here. I was at Wake Competition Center Buffalo yesterday. Buffalo fans, Rangers fans, Islanders fans. They're here. So Jacob was at a camp, <laughs> or he's at a clinic yesterday. So I had to watch the first two periods yeah. at Wake Cup. Yeah. In the little cafe area. And there was Rangers fans in the cafe. Right. Like, come on, people. So we're all trying. Like, when the Rangers scored first, like, a couple of Rangers fans in the corner got up and started yelling. I'm like, oh, you're all decked out at Wake Cup. I mean, this is a this is a Canes spot. It's like literally their facility. It's yeah. their facility for the junior Canes. Right. And you're rocking Rangers stuff. That's just how the area is. And I'm yeah. fine with that. Yeah, that is what it is. Like, we're not saying like, don't wear don't. your stuff. It's I just like, it. cry less because y'all already live here. It's not like y'all can't have a good showing in That's that building the if they geofence. So the geofence thing becomes a thing. And it's like, who's coming down from New York for this? Rich people. So who cares? Right? You They'll should, figure out a way in anyway. They'll find a way. But they, yeah. But here's the real issue. It's not the geofencing. <laughs> it's not like the everyday people can afford that. That's the thing. Because people were, oh, the geofencing might be working because there's a lot of like blue dots on Ticketmaster. If you see the little blue dots, that means they're actual blocks of available tickets, not resale, right? And they're all on the upper deck. And I said, are you sure that's the geofencing doing the work? Or is it the expense of the ticket? Right. Like Upper, you, deck, if you, upper deck seats for, a, for round two clear $200. Bro. Right. If you're a fan that he, even a fan that like lives in Atlanta, say yeah. like it's still going to cost you money and time and all of that stuff to come here for a playoff game. Like, so I don't know, like it, it's silly. It's just, you're if you don't have a lot of money, you're not going anyway. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of y'all live here, so it's fine. So I'm actually looking up, uh, let me pull, let me pull this up on Ticketmaster because I want to make sure. Uh, yes. Accept and continue. Yes. I understand this. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. All right, so if I want to sit in section, okay, so right now standard admission three nineteen is one hundred and forty dollars. When you add in the fees and all that other fun stuff, you end up coming up, you know, close to two hundred dollars for this stuff. If you wanted to sit in the corner, and that's if you're going by yourself, or is that for this two? is by myself? If I wanted See? to sit yeah. lower level corner right now, an available seat, I think that's row Z. This is not a resale seat, okay. but row Z, section 109, seat three, yeah. is $318 plus fees for a Thursday night playoff game. Right. So it ain't geofencing. It's expensive. I think the parking's going to go up in price, too. I think tick, parking prices for round one were 45 bucks. 
Oh, I was going to say, yeah, 50. 45 mm -hmm. bucks for that. No, thank so you. So get the geofencing shit out of here. The ticket prices are the real That's thing that's that keeping fence. people out, man. Good. That's the real fence. Yeah. I was going to say something I probably shouldn't have said. But yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> that concludes lightning round. You know how much my dad paid to go to F1 in Miami? I don't know if I want to. A couple know. years ago? What was it last year or the year before? At least a grand. More. Oh. Okay. He paid over three grand. Wow. For the event. And I, th I said like to him. That's not just for a ticket, right? Well, I mean, it gets you certain access. I'm like, oh, okay. So oh, it okay. gets you like this place. He goes, oh, no. If I had spent 5000 or $6,000, I would have had access to like the buffet and all this other stuff. I mean, it is just wealth on display. But we're getting to that point with hockey tickets as well. I hate to see it. I absolutely hate to see it. So I'll be on the lookout for cheap tickets. Hopefully, maybe there's a, <laughs> there's a youth hockey promotion that will keep it cheap for us. Big thanks to Mosquito Authority for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. Check them out online, bugsbite.com. You can bundle and save with Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority. Again, go to bugsbite.com. No contracts. You can pay as you go. Or uh, like I do with Mosquito Authority, I know I'm getting those treatments for the entirety of the summer. So you can just pay a one-time fee, bundle, save that way. Uh, and of course, you can bundle more by going with Pest Authority as well. All that is at bugsbite.com. Maybe you've got questions about... Seltzers, you've got questions about edibles, Delta 8, Delta 9, what's THCA, et cetera, all sorts of questions because uh, as there's so many different strains of it now, it's like wild. I'm like, what is that? You mean? went out of state, you hung out with a friend, you had something, you're like, this is amazing, but you don't know exactly what it is when you get back to North Carolina. Well, right. if you've got those types of questions, Nature's Relief has the answers yes. for you. So head on over to naturesreliefhempstore.com. Again, that's Nature's Relief, and relief is spelled like a tree leaf, R-E-L-E-A-F, hempstore.com. Uh, and if it's just about a vibe, yeah, they got stuff for that. You're looking for things that might help with stress, they can answer some questions about that. I know in my instance, in my case, I've always had uh, concerns about getting deeper sleep, not longer sleep, just a nice deeper sleep. Mm -hmm. CBDN was something that I did not know existed. Until I asked questions and I got some answers thanks to Nature's Relief. So again, check them out online at naturesreliefhempstore.com. And as we remind you, tell them that you heard it on the podcast. We will get out of here on one Hey Joe question that comes from me uh, before I ask that question on Hey Joe, because I'm not going to read the Rangers responses on YouTube. Yeah. Ranger fan, I guess Rangers fans got the game or our discussion about Kane's Rangers game one into their algorithm. And I'm seeing a bunch of Rangers fans in the comment section. I'm like, y'all, this podcast is not for you. Right. <laughs> this is for Kane's fans here in the triangle or those who are Kane's fans who do not live in the triangle. It's not for Rangers fans, but that's neither here nor there. Big thanks to Crank Arm Brewing. They're helping us out with the After Darks. And you can go drink their beer at their location, Crank Arm Brewing in downtown Raleigh. Great spot. Great events to take place all the time. Or you can pick them up locally at your favorite bottle shops, uh, grocery stores, or a little corporate synergy. When you go to Butcher's Market, they have Crank Arm at oh, nice. the Butcher's Market. So again, check them out, crankarmbrewing.com. So here's my Hey Joe question that we will get out on. Because you texted me. You you decided to celebrate the weekend of May the 4th, which and is a day of rain yesterday. And, yes. the, and honestly, I hate May 4th. I hate Star Wars Day. It used to be a stupid internet joke. I hate what it's gotten too corporate, Bradlow. Yeah, I mean, there was like a festival in downtown Cary and everything. Yeah, I um, we, I, I we, wanted, we, we I wanted were going to go, gonna to go but I wanted to go to that. It, the weather and everything yeah. else and just yeah i did i did want to go to the uh because i know downtown Cary park had like some great dark park. side light side etc etc but it's gotten too corporate lord i remember when may the 4th used to be about the spirit oh my god it used to be about the spirit it used to be about the force but now it's about disney but that's neither here nor there the midichlorians Whatever. You had never seen The Phantom Menace. No, I had seen it. Which they re-released in the theaters. I have seen it. Oh, so you've seen Phantom I saw Phantom it back Menace. when it came out in 97 or whatever okay, that well, was. well, so then you know how terrible it I is. I had forgotten. Oh. Well, and, and, and I had never... Is that the only time you saw it? 
back in 98, yes. 97, 98. Yes. And so I, and I hated it then, but I was also like, you know what? I was really tired of Star Wars at the time. Like yeah. maybe I was just like overreacting. These movies are what they are. I have, you have to judge them a little differently than okay. you would some of these movies. You, you know how I mean, it is. Right. Like the dialogue's right. going to be cheesy. The acting's going to be a little weird. Like yep. you have to allow for some of that. But even with all of that, I was like, Okay, this is so boring. <laughs> and this and the dialogue is so bad and the acting is so bad. And I'm just like, I I I nodded off. I nodded off in the theater. Not yeah. even kidding. My kid starts off, by the way. Lo well, like, uh, for context, seen it how old is Alex? Seven. He's, seven. he's seen it, but it's been like years, I think. Sure. Like a couple years at least. So and you probably watch it at home. Yes. Where you can be on the couch and kind yes. of space out. Exactly. All that kind of stuff. Yes. So in the beginning, he's all in. He's loving Jar Jar Binks. Like, he's like, oh my God, he, you know, because I, I warned him going, I'm like, people don't like Jar Jar. He's like, oh, but it, it, I thought, I remember thinking he was funny. And then, like, during the movie, he's like, oh, he's cracking up at everything yeah. he says. As it goes on, he's slowly worn down by Jar Jar to the point that he's just like, oh, I hate him. Yeah. And I just, it was so funny to like watch yeah. it happen in real time. He's like literally sitting the wrong way on the recline movie seat with his face in his hands like trying to just get through this he's like how much is left and i told him he goes no it's not yeah <laughs> he's like because yeah. it is a little long it's two hours 16 minutes it's a little longer than my son is used to but for star wars he usually doesn't care sure like but for this one he, he was wasn't interested like, he all was... of the senate stuff he was like this is so boring mommy and he, i was like he wasn't interested in <sighs> trade route negotiations what just... and blockades like imagine all of the buildup. <laughs> Like, it's Lauren, amazing they even released more after that. You don't need to remind me about the lead up to the point where a couple of weeks ago, there were, people were revisiting the fact that the Phantom Menace trailer was released ahead of Meet Joe Black, oh. the, the terrible <laughs> Brad Pitt movie. I, some people really go hard for that movie. Well, whatever. this was I've a never trailer seen it. that was attached to that movie. Because it's too long. And people bought tickets. <laughs> to meet Joe Black specifically to watch the trailer and then walked out when the trailer was done. Oh, okay. Got it. Now, I remember seeing the trailer for the first time, not in the theater, but this is how old it was, waiting for it to load up on QuickTime. Oh, yes. Yes. Right, with a dot .mov that, yeah, I think you got off the Apple Movies trailer website or whatever it was, or mm -hmm. you found it somewhere. And I remember it took forever to load up yeah. as a QuickTime file. And seeing it on an iBook... And being, you know, kind of hype. Was it an iBook at that time? I don't even remember iBooks. No, was, are those the ones that were different colors? Uh, yes, were like okay. the clamshell ones. Yeah, right? like they're like and red like and blue, purple yeah, and blue. Exactly. Yeah, okay, cool. So anyway, I remember that's how I saw that trailer. And I remember the trailer being like, oh man, so many questions. What is going on? Who is this? And who is that? Yeah, I, we, we, we watched the trailer before I bought tickets yeah. because I was like, let me just see, because he, he wants to see all the trailers now. And he was like, oh, it looks good. So I remember watching the movie in the theater when it came out. <laughs> I went to the midnight showing. I forgot where I saw the midnight showing here around here, but that's the thing we there. I just remember walking out when the movie ended, walking out, thinking to myself, was that it? It was that? Is this was was this bad? No, it wasn't bad. It I love that. It, bad. I love that you were like. It couldn't have been bad. arguing with yourself. No, I, about I whether an, it was I bad. I had an internal conflict. I was like, this can't be. It's come on now. So I went and saw it again, and it confirmed to me that this movie was terrible. It was very bad, and it hit me the first time I saw it. It hit me when they went through. Well, it was like, oh, well, we got to go through the planet's core and we got to get in our little squid ship and go see the other Gungans or whatever it was, right? You can't have those. You can't have Jar Jar be the major, a major plot driver. Yeah. Of, that was the, that was a oh, big yeah, it was, mistake. It was a huge mistake. So they're doing all this other <laughs> stuff. And I remember seeing it the first time I thought to myself, when they were going through the ocean to get down to, you know, wherever Jar Jar comes from, I was like thinking to myself, it's always going to be a bigger fish. That's right. Then that, that, that's where I went. This is horrible. Although Alex looks at me and he goes, that's true. I was, like, true. I was like, no, he is right. But that's but. The, that was the first moment I went, this movie's not very good. So when I saw it again, I was like bored to tears with that entire sequence. Because there were like sequence. eight of those, by the way. There kept being a bigger fish over and over. Yes. We were like, we get it. We get There's it. a bigger fish. The Padre scene anyway, is like five hours long. That's now, when I fell asleep. Now, that being said, that being said, okay. not to cut you off, do not say a negative word about that pod race. I actually, okay. Well, I slept through it, so I can't say it. How could you sleep through the pod race? I was very tired. Phantom Menace has two redeeming qualities and two redeeming qualities. Okay, only. I want to see if you if you feel like the second one is one of mine too. Okay. The first one is the pod race. Got it. From a visual 
audio yeah. perspective, the fact that they go the first two laps without any music, you were just getting bombarded with amazing sound effects. Right, right, right. All right. The sound was good. That was badass. And then the music kicks in when they hit to the third, right. uh, the third lap. And Anakin, you know, pulls off one of the greatest comebacks of all time. I put that up there with the Cavaliers coming back from a 1-3 deficit to the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. It's up there. It's clearly up there. Now, the second part is the lightsaber battle with Darth Maul, yes, Qui-Gon. That was the one I was going to point out. You that was actually fates, very good. All that stuff. I enjoyed that very much. Awesome. Yeah. You know, it made me wonder about the engineering structural ability of Naboo as to why they have all these various things and why in Star Wars everywhere has like an endless bottomless pit that people die in. <laughs> or that has like continuous ledges to fall onto. Right. right. It's just the classic Star Wars. <laughs> it's I'm like, like, wow, that's convenient. Do you guys not have OSHA? I'm very confused about this. <laughs> I mean, think about the way the Senate looks, though. It's like everyone's oh, yeah. just in it's, these it's like just every, everybody's just waiting to fall. pods yep. or whatever. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. So, those are the two redeeming qualities. Of it. But yeah, I agree. My kids are a little bit older. I have a 16-year-old and a soon-to-be 13-year-old. And I'd be curious to happen. This, this is where the prequels end up being retconned for the next generation and ultimately where George Lucas was right about Star Wars ultimately being for kids. There's a TV show called The Clone Wars. It's an animated TV show that you can watch on Disney Plus now. Okay. My kids got into The Clone Wars, the cartoon. So when they went back and they watched the prequels, the prequels made sense to them and it helped them like set up. So there's so much that makes no sense I in that think, movie either. I think Attack of the Clones <laughs> is the worst. Attack of the Clones is the worst Star Wars movie. Worse than made. Phantom Menace? Worse than Phantom Menace. I don't know. Worse than the last, uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Well, it, I, it is the, the thing, worst. The one. newer movies, I actually. Worst. I actually enjoyed some of the newer movies more, much Sorry. more than Phantom Menace, which I thought was very boring. So Attack of the Clones is. To me, without question, I don't want to hear any argument. The worst Star Wars movie make, ever made. See, now I want to watch this again. It's argue awful. With you about it. It's the it's the one that gave us the line from Anakin: "I hate sand." Oh, it's sure. terrible. Well, see, uh, yeah, it went from like little Anakin and Padme to now I'm supposed to believe that uh, Anakin's this. You know, I forgot about that twist, by the way. So I spent the first like whatever bit of the movie very confused. Yeah, like I'm like, wow, that isn't looks so much like Natalie Portman. Yeah. It sounds like Natalie Portman. It is Natalie Portman. And then I, fe <laughs> I felt yeah, there like you go. idiot. So that's, that's easily the worst one yeah. uh, if you go back and watch Attack of the Clones. But the kids loved it because they were all in the Clone Wars. So the Attack of the Clones gave you the big start of the Clone Wars. So they were all into it. And that's when it dawned on me. Having kids with Star Wars, it dawned on me. You know what? This ain't for me. But thankfully with the Disney well, stuff. Well, to be, be a fair, Phantom fan Menace seemingly isn't really for kids either. Yeah, they yeah, they, they don't want to see the, the politics. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> To me, the, the better Star Wars now, um, as an adult, and thankfully, I hope hope we get more of these, is Andor. Yeah, I've heard that. I That's on my list. Don't I, watch I, it with Alex. He's going to be bored to Oh, tears. I know. But Andor... I know that's for me. Andor is some of the best sci-fi. Not Star Wars. Some of the best sci-fi Right, because the, the thing about Star Wars, you have to accept a degree of like bad acting and cheesiness. Not an Andor. You have to. And that's where I always have trouble because I'm like, I'm not invested enough in this world to actually overlook those things. Yeah. You know? But I think the newer movies have been better about that, in my opinion. I like... If you're going to have Jar Jar Binks in the movie, you have to make him useful in some way. You have to make him do something well, well right? Mean, you have to give him one redeeming quality. Even the dopes in all of these movies have like something they do well, their moment to shine. Jar Jar was so bad and like actively ruined everything, well, the entire movie. He's also the reason why the Emperor <laughs> got the power, because he cast the deciding vote. Right. In Revenge of the Sith. So oh, I didn't just, even think about that. Oh, yeah. yeah just yeah. ruining everything is all he did. So I saw this ranking of um, best movies out of the series, right? You got the prequels, the originals, and the sequels. Well, where do they have Phantom Menace? So out of the prequels, Revenge of the Sith is the best one. Okay. Phantom Menace would be number two. Attack okay. of the Clones is way down the list. Right. At last. Out of the originals, it would be Empire Strikes Back, A New Hope, and then Return of the Jedi. And then for the sequels, it would be Last Jedi, Force Awakens, and then way, way, way down the list would be Rise of Skywalker because they had to like retcon all the stuff from Last Jedi. But I, I ride for Last Jedi. I know some people get bothered I liked, by that. I, li I liked. To me, Last Jedi is really, really good because it got away from, or at least tried to set the table of, it's not just about the stupid family lineage, okay? It's time right. to move on to the next thing. Exactly. Instead, they had That's to like, exactly how I all felt. the fanboys were like, no, I gotta know who's related to who and who's this. No, 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 no. That's not the point. 
which is why I probably like Andor so much because it strips out all the stupid Jedi bullshit. Right. And gives me the stuff that I'm actually interested in in Star Wars. And that is, ah, yes, the classic fight of fascism versus normal people. Give mm-hmm. it to me. That's, that's what, what we I want. want. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the uh, that's the thing. But anyway. I didn't realize we we're going to go that far of a tangent on Phantom Menace, but oh, you got sure me going. You, did. you got me going, Brownlow. <laughs> I did. You got me going. I could have told you that. You got me going. All right. That's going to wrap it up for today's edition. <laughs> what was supposed to be about an hour of a show. Sorry. I ended up going about 15 minutes talking about Star Wars. Did you expect anything less? No. 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 We'll see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm.